I am a Catalan tutor at the University of uh, Maynut in Ireland, 20 kilometers uh, from Dublin. And uh, this event is organized by the uh, Catalan Studies at the National University of Ireland in Maynut in collaboration with the Institute Ramon Llull, the institution that uh, promotes uh, Catalan culture and language abroad. Um, this uh, conference is open today to students uh, attending Catalan classes at universities in Ireland and the United Kingdom. Um, there are people from Cork, Bristol, Birmingham and other institutions here. Thank you, thank you all uh, for being here and thank you to my colleagues in the Institute of Ramon Llull Network uh, for um, the collaboration in promoting the event especially to Xavier from Bristol uh, who, um, for um, introducing the questions at the end of the uh, conference. Um, now I'm pleased to introduce you uh, to the speaker, um, but uh, first I would like to remind you that uh, if you have any questions at the end of the presentation, you have the opportunity to ask uh, them directly to our speaker, uh, Dr. Abeli Flos, and you can also write your questions in the chat. Um, Dr. Abeli Flos is a Valencian social linguist. Uh, he graduated in Catalan philology in 2010 at the University of Barcelona and uh, earned a PhD in advanced uh, studies on Catalan language and literature in 2017 in the same institution. Uh, his thesis uh, dealt with uh, language uh, uses and the construction of social identities among Catalan and Valencian teens. He is a researcher at CUSC, a research center for sociolinguistics and communication at the University of Barcelona, and a member of its uh, steering committee he is an assistant professor at the Department of Catalan Philology and General Linguistics at the University of Barcelona. Uh, he teaches sociolinguistics, language ecology and planning and introduction to linguistics in the Linguistics Bachelor of Arts. And he uh, teaches also at the Faculty of Arts and Humanities at the Open University of Catalonia. Mm, his research uh, focuses on the social linguistics of the youth, on language and immigration, on demolinguistics, and on language uh, policy and planning, mainly in the field of education. Uh, he has published on such uh, issues in journals as Treballs de Sociolinguística Catalana, Revista de Llengua y Dret, and the Journal of Iberian and Latin American uh, Studies. Mm. From 2019 on, he has been a member of the steering committee of the Catalan Society of Sociolinguistics, affiliate of the Institute for Catalan Studies. Okay, uh, today uh, our guest uh, will give a lecture entitled uh, Political Identities and Linguistic Practices in Contemporary Catalonia. And the aim of which is to give an overview of the sociolinguistic situation in Catalonia in the 21st century and prospects of bilingual Spanish Catalan in this environment. Um, now, uh, let's get started. And thank you, Abeli, for being here today. Thank you, Ferran, for the introduction. Uh, first of all, um, I want to thank uh, you all for coming, uh, and also thanks to Ben Ices and also the Institute Ramon Llull for the opportunity uh, and the invitation to give this, this talk today. Uh, so, um, uh, I, as Ferran said, uh, I am a sociolinguist, and that means that I try to understand the complex relationships uh, between language and society with a focus on the Catalan language, and I am cur currently working at CUSC, which is the, the Research Center for Social Linguistics and Communication at the Universitat de Barcelona, and Xavier Mas, who is uh, uh, now teaching Catalan uh, at the University of, of Bristol, was one uh, brilliant research assistant there. So I am really honored and very happy to, to, 
to be able to share some thoughts on the social linguistic situation of Catalonia with some of his uh, students. So uh, the goal of this session, as Ferran said, is to know a little bit more about the social linguistic situation in, in Catalonia. Um, and uh, okay, I want to share now the screen. Yes. So I guess uh, by now, uh, are you seeing the, the presentation? I, I hope you are you are doing so. Uh, so um, okay, thank you. <laughs> so uh, um, I guess you probably know that Catalonia is officially bilingual, for instance, uh, because it recognizes both Catalan and Spanish as official languages. But uh, I wonder when I pre uh, prepare this presentation. Sorry, because this is not moving. Okay, so when I uh, started to prepare this presentation, I wonder what exactly do you know about the, the social vitality and the legal status of languages there in Catalonia? Um, and what's the relationship between these uh, uh, language policy issues and the linguistic practices and ideologies and identities of the inhabitonia? So, and I wonder this because uh, information about Catalonia can be somehow uh, misleading, especially since uh, support for independence started to grow almost 10 years ago now. And so uh, political tensions around identity issues and also uh, around Catalonia's political status became relevant in the international arena. So um, for instance, uh, a French new newspaper uh, uh, published a report in uh, uh, February 2019 uh, stating literally that Catalonia has gone mad uh, so the journalist went on to say that Spanish was forbidden in Catalan universities, for instance, or that if you ask a question in Spanish in the street, uh, you may receive, you know, angry answers, or that it's almost impossible to, to watch a film in Spanish in a Catalan uh, cinema. Uh, but what's interesting is that, is that uh, not far away in time, uh, a Catalan newspaper could publish uh, an interview with a renowned Catalan uh, linguist, Carme Zunyan, which you see uh, in the picture, where she states um, that Catalan is in fact an endangered language, which can uh, disappear soon unless uh, you know policymakers and also individual speakers implicate themselves uh, in a stronger language revitalization agenda. So, as you can see, there's a clear uh, mismatch between uh, in the information provided by different actors within and outside uh, Catalonia. So, the French report represents Catalan as a hegemonic language. Um, in a context um, of repression of a Spanish-speaking population. Uh, and the second one represents Catalan as a minority language struggling for its survival. Uh, and the Catalan government has been unable to, uh, you know, revive this, this language. Uh, so to put this in the Irish context where, the, where most of you are studying, uh, uh, we could wonder whether the situation of Catalan is close to that of English. Um, or is more like that of Irish, uh, or for those of those of you who are studying at the UK, you know, uh, Welsh in Wales or Gaelic, uh, Scottish Gaelic in Scotland, etc. So the, this talk aims to clarify some of these issues. Uh, and before starting, I thought it was a good idea to to challenge you with with a short quiz uh, to see to what extent are you familiar with uh, Catalan and Catalonia. Uh, so I've created a short online quiz it's in Kahoot. I don't know if you are familiar with this app. Uh, so it allows you to play with using any device, but I guess the best option is uh, for you to use a cell phone so that you can uh, you know, keep on looking at the presentation in your computer while, while you play in the other device. So first of all, you need to access uh, kahoot.it uh, and then introduce the game pin. I, am, I will stop sharing this presentation and share with you the game. So uh, access kahoot.it and then, okay, you have here the game pin. And start accessing. Okay, James. I don't know whether teachers uh, have to play but uh, I guess some of them won't uh, answer correctly to the tricky uh, questions. So you don't need to worry if you don't know uh, the answer to some of the questions. It's, it's perfectly normal. 
and it's not the game of the, the game. So, I don't know how many people there is in the session in this moment, but we'll wait a little while. Messi, football player. There. Uh, okay, so we are 18 now. Um, I think we maybe we can start. Yes. Or is someone trying to access? Oh, the music is annoying. Okay. I think we can start because we are 18 people now. Um, so. The first question, pretty basic. Okay, so um, in fact, Catalan is not a dialect of Spanish, as someone would think, because of Catalonia's. Uh, uh, belonging to the Spanish state, and as we'll see, it's a Roman language closely related to Spanish, but also to Italian, French, Portuguese, etc. So let's move to the second one. Lead is on the lead. Uh, Catalan is only spoken in Catalonia. So uh, yeah, uh, Catalan is not only spoken in, in Catalonia, it's also spoken in other uh, areas uh, in Spain and outside Spain, as we'll see later. The estimate number of fluent speakers of Catalan. In fact, uh, the number of fluent speakers is close to 10 million, uh, and that means that uh, Catalan has more, more speakers than languages with full recognition as a state languages, such as uh, Danish, Finnish, Latvian, Slovenian, etc. Uh, so the next one is a bit more tricky. The mother tongue of the majority of fluent speakers of Catalan is... So, in fact, uh, most uh, uh, Catalan speakers are not native speakers of the language, and this is the result of uh, language in education policies, as we will see later. Um, so, Jack is on the lead now. Uh, Catalonia. In fact, um, my, it is much closer to 25 than to 50 percent. Uh, the last estimate is nearly 30 percent of people in Catalonia are native speakers of uh, Catalan. Uh, and with uh, okay, so now Jack is still on the lead. The next one is uh, about language policies. So we move to other issue. So, uh, in fact, Catalonia has three uh, official languages. Um, uh, it recognizes uh, Aranese, a variety of the Occitan language, as an official uh, language. Um, so it was free, despite I said two in the, you know, uh, at the beginning of the presentation. So, other questions about language policies? <laughs> So I 
included this this question because maybe you've heard or read that Catalan uh, is uh, is the Catalan education system is a monolingual one, but it's more complex than that, as we will see later. And, and um, apparently, you also knew that. Okay, um, let's move to the next one. Language policy, but in higher education now. Okay, so uh, in fact, it, it is 75% uh, of undergraduate courses taught in Catalan, in Catalan universities. So if you are planning to go to Barcelona uh, in some time to, to, to just study at a Catalan university, uh, you will find 75% of undergraduate courses in Catalan uh, with 10% taught in English and the rest uh, in Spanish. Um, okay, the, the last two questions are about media and cultural industries. Um, okay, uh, in fact, less than 5% of uh, films in Catalan cinemas are in Catalan. Um, so this is a clear, Spanish has a clear hegemonic position. was clearly uh, more difficult. Uh, in fact, uh, in, in 2017, almost 75% uh, of users listen to radio stations broadcasting in, in Catalan. So uh, I think we have a winner, um, probably is Zach. Okay, congratulations to James. Um, the winner is Zach. Okay, but uh, beyond the number of correct answers, I thought uh, it was a good idea to start with this uh, quiz uh, for you to see that uh, the situation of Catalan in Catalonia is one of important contrasts with uh, Catalan uh, with a high degree of vitality in some uh, spheres and in a clear minority position in others. So um, it allows us to move to the presentation uh, and to the exposition already uh, now. I'll share the presentation. Okay, so now we can move to the presentation. The PowerPoint is okay with that. Okay, so uh, by now uh, you know that Catalan has. Sorry, because I have still the music, the Kahoot music playing in my headphones. So, uh, as you know by now, Catalan has uh, some 10 million fluent speakers, uh, and it's not only spoken in, in Catalonia. So, you can see uh, that Catalan is, is spoken across four different states. Uh, first, in Andorra, which is a tiny um, independent state in the Pyrenees, mostly in Spain, in five different autonomous communities. Uh, first of all, Catalonia, but also in Valencia and the Balearic Islands. And also an eastern part of Aragon and some small villages in Murcia. In Murcia, Catalan is still uh, is also the historical language uh, of what we call Catalonia North, uh, which corresponds to the French Department of Pyrenees Oriental. And we have uh, James Hockey here, who is uh, uh, a specialist in, in Catalan in this, in this area. Um, and also in the city of Alguero in Sardinia, uh, in Italy. And so Catalan is in contact with Spanish, but also with uh, French, with uh, Italian, with Sardinian, with Occitan too. Uh, and it enjoys very different degrees of vitality and also institutional support depending on the territory. So Catalan is the only official language of Andorra. Uh, it's also recognized as an official language in Catalonia, in Valencia, and in the Balearic Islands. But it, it, it don't have um, uh, official recognition in Aragon, in uh, Carce, in Murcia, uh, Catalonia North, or Alguero. So uh, that said, we'll focus now in the case of Catalonia, and we'll focus first on a fast 
uh, overview of the history of the Catalan language and its contact with Spanish uh, for you to understand why there's still people speaking Catalan uh, in their daily lives. Uh, then we'll talk a bit about language policies implemented in Catalonia since the recovery of uh, political autonomy in the 1980s. Uh, and finally, present you some data uh, on language abilities, practices, and identities uh, of Catalan population for you to get you know, a sense of the, the complex relationships between uh, uh, of the, the complex uh, dynamics of the contact between Catalan and Spanish in daily life. So I'll be speaking for about 30 minutes, uh, and then we'll have time for, for some questions, although I don't feel there's a specific need to go through all the contents. Uh, so I'll be very happy to you know, uh, answer questions or clarify uh, any specific uh, point at, at any moment. So, but it, it's, uh, maybe Ferran can interrupt me if, if somebody wants to ask a question, because, uh, you know, it's difficult when, when you are sharing the screen uh, to keep track of other things going on on, on Zoom. So Ferran, maybe uh, if there's a question or a comment uh, uh, while we move uh, over the presentation, uh, you can uh, interrupt me, okay? <laughs> So uh, let's go. Uh, let's talk about uh, a bit about history. We need to go back to the Middle Ages. So first, Catalan is a Roman language, and as such, is, it is the uh, the result of the evolution of Latin in today's Catalonia and southern France. And it then spread to Valencia and the Balearic Islands as a consequence of the uh, Christian expansion following Arabic rule in the Iberian uh, Peninsula. And Catalan was uh, fully standardized, meaning that we had a uniform norm for writing uh, and also was the main official language of the Aragon crown that was an independent uh, kingdom uh, organized in the form of a confederal state very much like the United States today uh, and at the moment of high expansion you can see that it covered also Sicily, Naples etc etc and you can wonder why uh, this Aragon crown doesn't exist anymore and the answer is that in the mid 15th century, uh, the Spanish state was created as the result of the marriage of Aragon king with uh, Castile's queen. Um, they are popularly known as the Catholic kings. You may have heard uh, that. So uh, Spain didn't really exist before that, uh, but from this moment on, Castilian became uh, the language of the court. And so um, Catalan uh, was weakened. Uh, the position of Catalan was weakened among uh, the upper classes in Catalonia. But despite this, uh, the different kingdoms in the Aragon crown enjoyed a uh, wide autonomy, but this uh, ended uh, after the Spanish War of Succession, uh, in which, um, um, okay, resulting in, in the victory, yes, uh, of a, a French uh, royal family member. And from then on, uh, the, the central authorities in Spain have pursued the linguistic homogenization of uh, Spain uh, via, uh, on the one hand, um, uh, spreading the knowledge of, of Castilian, of Spanish, and on the other hand, uh, banning the use of Catalan uh, and other languages in different domains, such as uh, schooling, the public administration, and so on. We could wonder, though, uh, what impact has this on the population? And the answer is that uh, this, uh, um, the impact of these policies, these homogenizing uh, policies on the language practices of people in Catalonia was uh, very limited. So popular classes remained largely monolingual in Catalan, and on, only a tiny portion of aristocracy and high uh, bourgeoisie so the upper classes adopted uh, Castilian and passed it to the younger generation. So Catalan was still the language spoken by a huge majority of people in Catalonia. And so the claim for political autonomy that started to appear at the beginning of the 20th century was in fact legitimized by the presence of a different culture and language. A slightly before that, um, uh, Catalan uh, started to be used in literature and other kind of uh, publications. Uh, in a movement uh, known as La Renaissance, which literally means uh, revival. And, and then um, Pompeu Fabra, which is the man you see in the, in the second picture, uh, started the process of modernization and standardization of Catalan. And this was crucial because uh, Catalan attained the status of official language during the Second Spanish uh, Republic. And this mean, meant that it started to be used as a means of mass literacy in schools, it was used in public administration, newspapers, 
etc. This lasted less than a decade, uh, as you know, because Catalan was uh, again banned from public space during Franco's dictatorship following the civil war. So more than uh, almost 40 years. Okay, uh, but Again, uh, this had a fairly limited impact on the uh, language practices of the population because the popular classes in Catalonia uh, remained uh, Catalan speaking. Uh, but a huge transformation of Catalan demography uh, took place in this in these same uh, in the fifties and sixties with the arrival of a massive immigration of people uh, uh, of Castilian speaking people from other. Uh, parts of Spain. They were mainly peasants and they became the, the bulk of the new working class in Catalonia. And that also meant that Catalan, uh, Catalan natives experienced a process of uh, social mobility, of upward social mobility, as they became uh, owners of businesses, shops, etc. And so Catalan was identified with middle class positions. So Catalan was a language with a high social value. So a language that non native speakers, uh, wanted uh, to learn and to practice in their daily lives because it has it had this uh, high social value in this uh, context uh, of repression other things happen uh, the democratic opposition to uh, franco's regime uh, was led mainly by a catalan nationalist struggling for the recognition of their different uh, culture and identity and the protection of the Catalan language and by working class left wing parties that had that were stronger among these new working classes uh, of Castilian uh, speaking descent. Uh, and so we had this kind of strategical alliance between these uh, two actors uh, by which Catalan became an emblem of political resistance. And, and so um, this meant that uh, the Castilian speaking uh, working class people, um, maybe they, they uh, weren't learning and using the language, but they expected that their children uh, had to be able to do that in the future. Uh, in this context, uh, we saw also the development of uh, what Villa calls an integrationist ideology uh, frame. Uh, that aim to prevent the, for the, the creation of two different communities based on uh, language. So on the one hand, Catalans, people were from, uh, with Catalan, from Catalan descent and Catalan speakers, and Castilians, people uh, born in other parts of Spain and uh, Castilian speaking. Uh, it, there was the, the idea that this could uh, somehow harm uh, social cohesion in, in Catalonia and or even uh, drive social conflict among these different communities. So in this uh, kind of ideological paradigm, it has started to grow a working consensus over the language policies that should prevail in uh, after the devolution in the 1980s, uh, in which um, uh, all the people living in Catalonia should master both Catalan and Castilian. So the extension of a bilingual competence among all the population and that the usage of Catalan needed to be promoted after decades of uh, prosecution by, by Franco's regime and before, uh, but without uh, the expectations of some parts of the political spectrum that uh, Castilian speakers should assimilate into Catalan uh, rapidly. Um, so with this working consensus, we arrived at the language policies implemented in, uh, since the devolution in the 1980s. So the first uh, Statute of Autonomy of Catalonia, uh, again, if you, if you have any questions, you can uh, ask me now. Uh, I think this can be even more uh, dialogic, more interesting. So uh, in this first Statute of, of Autonomy of Catalonia in 1979, both Catalan and Castilian were recognized as official languages. Uh, but uh, a subtle distinction was made between both languages as Catalan was recognized as Catalonia's historical language, literally cat, uh, Catalonia's lengua propia, uh, literally is Catalonia's own language. And this distinction uh, was used to legitimize the promotion of the usage of Catalan in different uh, social uh, spheres or domains, like uh, the school system, public administration, public media, etc., etc. Sorry. 
in 2006, with the first reform of this statute of autonomy, uh, two other measures were taken to uh, enhance the position of Catalan. First, it was ruled that Catalan should be the language prefer preferentially used in these uh, domains, in school system, public administration, public media. And also it was introduced uh, this uh, duty to know uh, Catalan for citizens uh, in Catalonia, which uh, it was aimed to parallel the duty to know uh, Castilian that is established by the Spanish constitution. Uh, but these principles were deemed un unconstitutional by a sentence of the constitutional court that for many people uh, represented the start, the starting point of the, uh, in the, the pro independence movement uh, in the last decade. As I said before, uh, Aranis, a variety of the Occitan language uh, has also official status, uh, status and so is used in the school system, in the public administration, in La Val d'Aran, in the Pyrenees. We'll focus on language policies uh, in education uh, because this is also my, my field of expertise and where uh, um, most emphasis uh, has been made in language policies in, in Catalonia. Uh, and, Cat and Catalonia is an interesting uh, case because it's probably the only territory in the world where, where a minority language is used as uh, the means of instruction of all the school system and not only on a part of the schools or in different streams within the same schools, which is the case, I think, uh, of Irish, for, ex for instance. Uh, the Catalan model is called technically a model of conjunction in Catalan. And that means that it's a single system where students, uh, pupils with different linguistic backgrounds are mixed. And in fact, uh, the separation of students on the basis of language is explicitly forbidden uh, in the law. Uh, and this is, uh, this is reflective of the integrationist ideologies I talked to you about before. Uh, and in this uh, setting, Catalan is the normal language, is used as the normal language of instruction of content subject with, with Castilian and English taught as compulsory subjects in this uh, school system. So the goals of this system is to achieve a balanced and advanced uh, proficiency in both Catalan and Castilian, and to promote also the usage of Catalan. Um, despite this uh, Catalan being the normal language of instruction, this doesn't mean that the Catalan uh, school system is a monolingual system, as we saw before. In fact, uh, Catalan classrooms can be defined by, uh, uh, have been defined by different social linguists as heteroglossic spaces. And, and that means that uh, there are spaces where different languages are used simultaneously to fulfill different purposes within uh, the classroom. And for instance, in the study by Vanessa Brecha and Xavier Vila, they found that 73% uh, uh, of students uh, said that Catalan uh, was used uh, mainly by teachers in the classrooms, but also that 25% of students said that uh, teachers use both Catalan and Castilian within the classroom space. And these bilingual practices are even more frequent among the students. Uh, 64% uh, of students uh, say they speak mainly Catalan in the classroom, but uh, almost 30% or more than 30% say uh, that they use uh, Castilian. Uh, both Catalan and Castilian in the uh, classroom space. So if you visit a, a school in, in Barcelona, what you'll probably see is that teachers and institutional activities uh, use Catalan, uh, teachers, for instance, for their explanations in the classroom, etc. And that Castilian is also present in the classroom, uh, more in the practices of, uh, of students, in the interaction between uh, students uh, and teachers, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. With regard to the results of these language policies in education and this goal of achieve a balanced and advanced uh, competence in both Catalan and Spanish, uh, the results of public e evaluations that are shown in this in this graph uh, show that uh, students at the end of compulsory education achieve, a, in fact, a balanced and high. Uh, proficiency in both languages year after year. So this goal has been uh, largely achieved. Um, the results also show that um, there's a strong correlation between the results in Catalan and Spanish. And that means that uh, if you have good grades in Catalan, you also have good results in Spanish. Uh, and then that uh, other evaluations show that the level, uh, the, the proficiency 
in Spanish of Catalan students is similar, is close to the uh, proficiency in Spanish of uh, students in other territories where Catalan is not the main means of instruction. And so it, it can be thought that this education system is largely beneficial for students in the sense that it provides them with a bilingual repertoire that some of them uh, wouldn't have achieved with, without this, um, this kind of educational this education policy. And this doesn't harm their uh, proficiency in Spanish, which is the first languages, uh, the first language of most of the students. I have a question. I think we have uh, now time to present uh, Sorry, the results that, of this. Uh, so what's, what's clear here is that the, the goal to universalize bilingual competence is mostly achieved by the school system. What's less clear is what impact has this on the language practices and identities of the, of the, the population. Uh, so I'll present now some census data based on a survey by uh, the Catalan government in 2013. And then I'll see, uh, I'll show you uh, some extracts of uh, interviews for my PhD thesis uh, that help also to reflect on, this, on these trends. Uh, the first graph show the knowledge of Catalan of the population in, in Catalonia. Here you have that 80% of people claim to be able to speak uh, Catalan, and almost everyone says uh, they can understand the language. Uh, what's more interesting is what we, we see in this, second, uh, in this second graph. Here you have three different variables. First, uh, first language, which is the, the language that people start sp speaking at home. Uh, so it's first language or mother tongue, if you will. Uh, then we have language of identification. This uh, refers to the language people self-identify with and is the, the, the result of the answer to the question, um, what's your language? And this is the question uh, used to obtain this information. And then habitual language, which is the language that people use mostly in their daily life. So if you look first at the first language, you can see there are four different uh, responses. Catalan, uh, both Catalan and Castilian. Castilian, other languages and combinations of languages. And this is because uh, from 2000 on, Catalonia has become a multilingual, multicultural um, society with the arrival of people uh, you know, from Africa, Asia, Eastern Europe, Latin America, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, although people from Latin America have uh, mostly Castilian as their first language. So you can see that Catalan uh, native speakers are in a minority. This uh, we knew already, 30% uh, of the population. And that majority of people in Catalonia have uh, Castilian as their first language. But if uh, we compare this data, this data on first language with a uh, language of identification or the language uh, mostly used by people, you can see that Catalan in fact is uh, growing a bit. Um, and also grows the, the people who uh, self-identify or use both languages in daily life. And this uh, basically means that uh, there are Spanish speakers that are learning the language and incorporating some uses of Catalan uh, in their daily lives, despite they don't have it as their first language. And despite the fact that Catalan is in a clear minority position in demographic terms. We can see it uh, more clearly in this last uh, graph that comes from a research carried out by two colleagues, Xavier Vila and Nacho Soroy. Uh, they created different groups uh, based on the language practices of the people in the survey in different domains. So at home, with friends, with, uh, with classmates, uh, in shops, et cetera, et cetera and they created these four different groups. You can see that the main group is the people who speaks mostly Castilian or Spanish in their daily lives, but there's a similar group of people who speak mostly Catalan in their daily lives, a group, a smaller group using both Catalan and Castilian in their daily lives, and a, a group of people who speak mostly other languages like Tamazigh, uh, Moroccan Arabic, Romanian, Urdu, Punjabi, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and who these people speak uh, Spanish, uh, a bit of Spanish in their daily lives, but they don't usually speak 
uh, Catalan. What's interesting is uh, to compare this data with the first language of people. So comparing actual language practices with uh, the linguistic origins. First, we can see that uh, most uh, people who use mostly Castilian in their daily lives uh, are indeed uh, native speakers of Spanish. So here we don't have significant changes. Where we have more changes is in this case, almost 20% of people who speak mainly Catalan in their daily lives have a Spanish or other languages are their, their, as their first language. And in the people, in the group of people who use both languages uh, on a daily basis, we have uh, two thirds of people uh, who have uh, uh, Spanish, who have Castilian as their first language. So we can see uh, this, uh, this tendency, this uh, trend of attraction towards Catalan of a part of the population, despite the fact that Spanish remains the language, uh, the more common first language and the language most commonly used among the population in Catalonia. And this uh, distinguishes the case of Catalonia from other uh, minority languages, language communities in, in Europe. And I think this, this is what makes uh, the case of Catalan in Catalonia especially interesting. Uh, I brought uh, to end with two quotes from, uh, from uh, interviews I carried out uh, for my thesis in, in which I wanted to evaluate the impact of language policies on the language practices and identities of uh, teenagers. Uh, in Catalonia and also in Valencia, but today I focus on the case of uh, Catalonia. And we can see how um, these trends we have seen in, in, the, in demo linguistic data, in census data, is reflected also in the experience, in the daily uh, experience of uh, teenagers, of the youth. Uh, and what they show is that uh, uh, generally uh, teens uh, in Catalonia um, don't have a strong preference uh, for some languages. Instead, they used to, um, to adapt, to accommodate to the language they think is preferred by their interlocutors, the speakers to whom they are, um, they are speaking in this moment. So uh, here, first we have Juan, which is a Catalan speaking um, teen. Uh, who says, I, I'll read in Catalan, but you can follow the English translation in the right hand side. So, Joan says, He visto que bastante gent fa lo que yo faig, diguesim. De si et ve la persona de parlar en un idioma, doncs tu li contestes en aquell idioma. So, he, he, in his vision, this kind of adaptive behavior is the, uh, the most common trend among other uh, teens in his, uh, in his high school. Um, then Aleix says a similar thing. Uh, but insists on the fact that it's uh, rare, it's not common to see people who speak only Catalan or who speak only Spanish. Yeah? Uh, it's very uncommon and it's even more uncommon to refuse to speak the other's language. Ale says, en aquest cole, eh, tothom sap parlar tot, o sigui, aquí no és o parles l'un o parles l'altre. La gent parla les dos, però parlen més català. Here. He has a, a bit of, of a trouble. Uh, o sigui, vale, hi ha gent, hi haurà una o dues persones que parlen només castellà, però jo he sentit a tothom parlar català i a tothom parlar castellà. Ok, so... Uh, I have here some um, challenges for Catalan because I provided basically a, an, an optimistic view of the situation of Catalan, but I think maybe it's, it's better to move to questions because uh, I need to leave at three and I think you all, uh, you also need to, to leave at three. And if we have time, then we have uh, we can face these, these challenges, but uh, now I prefer to move uh, to the questions uh, and answers. Uh, and uh, thank you very much for, for your attention. Okay, Th uh, thank you very much, Aveli, for your very interesting uh, presentation. I think it was a question, uh, Ruth. Can yeah, sorry, I put it in the chat. Um, I had a question regarding um, well, the education system in Catalonia and if you feel that 
um, the educate the new education policies uh, have strength have helped to strengthen young people's or uh, teenagers' regional identities. Um, it's a big question, I know, but it's something that I find really interesting. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if you can repeat the question because I, I had really uh, quickly, sorry. Yeah. 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 So do you think the Catalan education system mm -hmm. has helped to strengthen young people's or teenagers' regional identities opposed to kind of I guess Spanish identities? Okay. Okay. Um, well, uh, this this is a claim that is uh, usually made by uh, opponents of the Catalan uh, model of, of education because they say that um, somehow uh, Catalan school is uh, adoctrinar in English <laughs> is because it's the key word. The key word is adoctrinar. I don't know if. Catalan teachers can help me. Indoctrinate. 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 Like it's yeah. In, yeah, it's indoctrinating. It indoctrinates people into. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, they are trying to indoctrinate this uh, Catalan nationalism and uh, you know the, the separatist agenda, etc. But in fact, it's more it's more complex than that. Um, I think that it has helped to create some sense of belonging into a a different political community within Spain. Uh, but not necessarily uh, in the direction of uh, fostering, you know, uh, independence or separation from, from the Spanish state. Uh, there's some research done on that, but I, I didn't focus uh, on national identity. I focus uh, more on what kind of identity, social identities uh, can people perform uh, based on the languages they, they know and they have acquired in this process of um, in this in the education system, uh, and and I didn't focus really on, on on the issue of of national identity, but you you can find this this kind of uh, discussion of this issue in the in the public debate. This yeah. is a common. No, thank you. That's really interesting. Thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. Hola, tengo una tengo una pregunta. Tu puc pregunta en català? Davant, sí, jo crec que sí. <laughs> Com veus la polèmica que ha sortit últimament amb el tema de la nova llei d'educació i creus que afectarà realment la situació de, tant del català com de les altres llengües minor minoritàries en l'estat espanyol? Hmm. Com ho veus? Well, uh, ara, uh, I don't know if I have to, to, to answer in, in, in English. I, I think it's better. Uh, okay, so there's this this proposal by by the Spanish government and also Esquerra Republicana, which is a political party, pro-independence political party in in Catalonia, that have agreed that um, you know uh, Castilian uh, is not has not been necessarily a means of instruction in all the school systems in, in the state. So there's uh, the idea that. Um, it protects somehow this uh, conjunction in Catalan model that, that we've seen that uh, protects the, the possibility for Catalan to be the main means of instruction in the in the school system. And so this is uh, this is somehow good news for people supporting uh, the, the, the Catalan model uh, of linguistic education. Uh, it won't... Um, but it's difficult to see how this will affect uh, actually the you know the, the working of these of these different school systems what it um represents is the, the idea that uh, um you know um political uh, the different autonomous communities have a more uh, power to decide how the the education system should be should be organized but not necessarily will have an impact on, on a change, a clear change in the linguistic practices within Catalan classrooms that, as, as we've seen before, uh, are indeed um, diverse. They are not, there's no homogeneity in the, in the working of the Catalan uh, education system. Uh, Catalan 
is Spanish, but also English increasingly are used uh, in Catalan classrooms uh, for different purposes in this kind of more plurilingual or multilingual uh, approach that, that now is hegemonic, I guess. Gracias. Gracias, Adu. Okay, and there's any other question? I think we have some questions in the chat or are the same, are the yeah. same, okay. <laughs> mm, no. Oh, uh, okay, well, um, uh, we can uh, finish uh, here. Um, Thank you, Abeli, um, for thank you very much. the presentation. And uh, thank you, everybody, to, to be here. Thank you. OK. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thanks. Gracias, James. Uh,